welcome back so in the last class i started giving you some historical perspectives of nmr spectroscopy and gave you some information about its utility in various branches of science and i also mentioned the names of the pioneers who contributed significantly many nobel laureates for this nmr spectroscopy of course we have to know that it is so we should know who are the pioneers who made nmr what it is today so that's what we discussed and also i discussed about spin angular momentum and how we can get empirically by knowing atomic mass and atomic number what we will do is today we'll continue further and see how we can arrive at the value of the nuclear spin based on the alignment of protons and neutrons within the nucleus of course empirical rule is one way just to make you familiar you should know how we can get if i say it is half just because i know atomic uh, atomic mass and atomic number we can work out but there is way to get it also in a different way if i take proton it has a single proton means hydrogen atom please remember in nmr jargon when we say it is a hydrogen atom we colloquially say it is a proton means not we are talking about the proton of the nucleus of course that's what we are mentioning that's what we are referring to but colloquially if there is a hydrogen atom in a molecule we say we are dealing with protons that means there is only one proton in it and it is a practice colloquially we say for hydrogen atom it is a proton so if you look at hydrogen atom it has a single proton in the nucleus what is the spin of proton i said it is half so no question of any discussion on that it is only one proton it is established experimentally its spin is half now let us take deuterium it has single proton and single neutron there is no pairing none of both of them are not paired they are single each of them are unpaired unspaired spins like proton and neutron they are unpaired each of them are single and each has spin half now join this combine this what is the total nuclear spin of deuterium 2 into half each of them have spin half so 2 into half it is 1 because i am just taking together the total total spin so it is 1 so spin of the deuterium is 1 now let us look at what is the spin of boron 10 see atomic mass is 10 but atomic number is 5 so in the atomic mass in the nucleus of the boron 10 we have five protons and five neutrons both are odd numbers now let us see what is the configuration how they get paired of course it is similar to your Uh, atomic theory where you can find out how the electrons are paired etc you know you all know atomic theory exactly similar to that of course more details are there i am not going to the details for which you need to understand lot more about nuclear physics but simply i am giving you how you have to find out the configurations from the configuration how you will arrive at the spin the proton configuration is given like this there are five protons first two are paired remaining three are unpaired how why they are unpaired why these two are paired why they are unpaired more details you can see in the nuclear physics okay no problem but you just take my word similarly neutron five five is neutrons are there odd number first two are paired three are unpaired so what is the total spin of boron 6 into half they are unpaired remains you have to always count unpaired spins you know unpaired unpaired protons unpaired neutrons you have to take into account and then work out the total nuclear spins so three unpaired protons three unpaired neutrons together there are six and total spin of each of them is spin half 
So total spin is 3. So boron 10 has spin 3. It is an integer number. That's what you can get from your table which I gave earlier. And for determining the nuclear spin, you can say boron 11 will go. It is the other isotope of boron. There are 5 protons and 6 neutrons. Neutrons are completely paired. They are even number. Proton configuration is, of course, we saw in the previous example, 2 are paired, 3 are unpaired. So, as far as the neutrons are concerned, completely they are paired. We don't have to worry. Now, there are 3 unpaired protons. As a consequence, boron 11 nuclear spin is 3 into half. It is 3 by 2. See, boron 10 is spin 3, boron 11 is spin 3 by 2. What you could get from the that table which I gave you by an empirical rule. Now, carbon 12 we will see. Is another thing. We always say carbon 12 spin is 0. That's what we saw. They both are even number. Atomic mass and atomic number both are even. The spin of carbon 12 is 0. Why? Look at this one. Both of them have 6 protons and 6 neutrons. They are completely paired. There is no unpaired proton in the configuration. Proton con pairing configuration, if you see, there is no unpaired proton. Similarly, there is no unpaired neutron. All protons and neutrons are completely paired. So what is the total spin of carbon-12? Zero. There is no unpaired proton or unpaired neutron. Nitrogen-14. I'm giving you another one example to make you more familiar. Seven protons and seven neutrons. Both are odd numbers. Now let us see the configuration. Proton configuration, six of them are paired. Only one proton is unpaired. Similarly, neutron configurations, six are paired, one is unpaired. So how many are unpaired in the nucleus? One proton and one neutron. Now, if you take this thing together, for the two unpaired, one proton, one neutron, the total spin of nitrogen 14 is 1. Spin of N14 is 1. With that, of course, I gave you some examples to work out. Do this exercise. Take any isotope of an element in the periodic table. Of course, don't go to a bigger one because then your configuration, you have to start working out. It is going to be a huge exercise. Something simple you can take like silicon or lithium like that. Find out what is the spin of lithium. Okay, lithium 6 and lithium 7 by this configuration. How they get aligned. You will know. You can use the table to find out or you can also use the method of configuration how they get paired to get the spin of the nuclear. Fine. That is important concept to understand. Now, if you have to understand NMR spectroscopy, you must know basics of NMR physics. Without that, you will not understand NMR. But you need to understand some mathematics, some spin physics. But I will try to minimize the mathematics as much as possible. I will not frighten you by giving high funda mathematics, high level mathematics. But whatever is required basically, I will make it as simple as possible to carry all of you with me. But these are the important concepts you must know if you know NMR spectroscopy. Now, if I look at the angular momentum P, which is represented as P of the nucleus, there are two quantum numbers associated with that. For the nucleus, if we have a, a spin angular momentum P, there are two quantum numbers associated with that. And these two quantum numbers define its properties, properties of this angular momentum. Remember? For this nucleus, spin angular momentum, if it is there, it is associated with two quantum numbers. These two quantum numbers define the properties of this P. Okay. What are they? One is a spin quantum number I. Okay. And all the nuclei with spin angular momentum have a magnetic moment also. This is a spin quantum number. That is one of the quantum number of the two. Second, remember, 
all the angular spin angular momentum of all the nuclei also have magnetic moment again it is a vector which has a magnitude and direction and the magnitude is constant and direction is also defined we can define the direction what is this this is magnetic quantum number given by m and m is related to i if i know spin quantum number i i know what is magnetic quantum number m that is why i have written as m subscript i please remember spin angular momentum p of the nucleus is associated with these two quantum numbers spin quantum number i and magnetic quantum number m which depends upon what is i and these two numbers will define the properties of angular momentum okay now let us look look at nucleus with spin quantum number i when i say it as a magnetic moment we can say we should understand what does it imply what do you mean by telling a material has a magnetic moment nucleus with spin quantum number i has a magnetic moment it implies that nuclear spins behave like a tiny magnet you know that when you have a magnet we can get magnetic moment you understand so it implies to me if i say any nucleus has spin high spin i it also has magnetic moment m as a consequence we can say all the nuclear spins behave like a tiny magnet every nuclear spin is a tiny magnet imagine if i take small uh, uh, small amount of sample to study nmr in the nmr tube let us say 1 ml or you can find out how many atoms are there in a given say, this thing by using avogadro number and each of them has so many tiny magnets remember millions and millions of tiny magnets will be there because we can treat every nuclear spin as a tiny magnet okay <coughs> sorry next what is the magnitude of this nuclear spin angular momentum i said nuclear spin angular momentum it has a magnetic it has a magnitude also what is the magnitude of the spin angular momentum that is given by spin quantum number i because its i say said its property is is decided by two quantum numbers i and m magnetic quantum number i said that's what i said right now if i want to find out the magnitude of this p it is given by this expression h cross into square root of i into i plus 1 now what is i what is h h cross h cross is of course nothing but planck's constant you all know h divided by 2 pi planck's constant divided by 2 pi is called h cross that is put here so p is the angular momentum its magnitude is given by this i is the spin quantum number all are known now that's it. that you don't have to get confused all these properties all this uh, parameters p i everything is known another thing we say in quantum mechanics the component of angular momentum along the axis of a magnetic field z is governed by magnetic quantum number m you see it is angular momentum is again a vector quantity it always gets quantized along a particular direction in a magnetic field i am taking the pz direction quantized direction and magnetic it is z component of this pz is given by what is called m h cross what is m m is the magnetic quantum number i remember i told you already m is a magnetic quantum number which depends upon i that's what i wrote mi so i uh, total the z component of the angular momentum depends upon m and it is given as, as pz equal to m h cross all those things you can derive but i'm you remember there is no need to go to the more details that this is a concept you must know the z this thing uh, z component of the angular momentum that is along the direction of the magnetic field pz is given as mh cross now 
the magnetic quantum number m i said depends upon i how does it depend upon i there is very well established rule given the magnetic quantum number m always takes so the value of i from minus i to plus i incremented in steps of one please understand if i know i that is a spin quantum number for example spin quantum number of proton is half what is minus i is half then minus i minus half to plus i plus half so it will go from minus half to plus half in steps of one the magnetic quantum number m depends upon i which can go from minus i to plus i in steps of one so as a consequence how many orientations are possible there are 2i plus n possible orientations okay the if i want to find out what is the magnetic quantum number m which i said m i that it defines the orientations of m based on i there are totally 2i plus n orientations possible for any given spin i okay the z component of the spin angular momentum means is always quantized in a given magnetic field b not so that's what i said p z component is quantized it is not it is not continuous it is discrete it is in quantized discrete quantized there and these directions are defined by now the number of uh, orientations are given by mi which goes from minus i to plus i in steps of one okay now what are the possible orientations we can think of for angular momentum p for different spin quantum number i we'll take examples i'm talking about i spin of the nucleus and angular momentum p is there and we found out what are the possible orientations the angular momentum orientations possible orientations is given by i which are nothing but mi so now for spin half nuclei there are two orientations minus half and plus half goes in steps of one if you take minus half and then add one you will get plus half so only there are two quantization directions there are only two orientations for spin half there are only two quantization directions for spin one there are three orientation three quantization directions because start with minus i this is, i is 1 that is minus 1 add 1 0 add 1 is 1 so from minus i to plus i there are only three orientations are spin one nuclei there are three quantization directions for spin 3 by 2 there are four orientations starts with minus i minus 3 by 2 then add 1 it will become minus half plus half And plus three by two. There are four possible quantization directions, four possible orientations for angular momentum, which is quantized along z axis. You can work out like this for any spin quantum number i of the nucleus. So the quantization directions we understood. This is spin of nuclear two. Then what is it? Quantization direction. And I say there are two possible orientation, which has directions. Two quantization directions. What are these? What do you mean by plus half direction? What do you mean? What do you mean by minus half directions? This is for positive value of m i. That is positive value of half. The spin angular momentum orients in the direction of the field. And this spin angular momentum orients in the direction of the field for spin angular momentum which is for negative values of mi so positive value of i mi it is in the direction of the field the same thing when it is negative it is in the direction opposite to the magnetic field there are two orientations for spin off this way and this way remember this concept will be using it very often to understand the degeneracy of the spin system etc as we go ahead okay so for spin of nuclei there are two possible quantization directions of mi plus half in this direction 
if the, it is the direction of the magnetic field let us say i take z axis as a direction of the magnetic field so one of the orientation direction is in the direction of the field other quantization direction is in the direction opposite to the field that's what please remember and the one which is in the direction of the field is called spin up and the other one is called spin down there are two orientations spin up and spin down they are also represented as plus half and minus half states so spin half has two possible quantization states okay two possible orientations along z direction so they are plus half and minus half spin up and spin down states and colloquially or conventionally in nmr jargon spin up state is defined as alpha and spin down state is denoted as beta please remember alpha and beta are spin up and spin down states nothing but plus half and minus half states is it clear the two spin states of spin half nuclei are plus half and minus half this is spin up and spin down or alpha state or beta state these are the terminologies which are routinely used now let us calculate the direction of orientation and magnitude of the spin angular momentum for a spin half nucleus i said it is quantized and i have two directions spin angular momentum i said z component is quantized and it is given by mh cross we remember i wrote a equation pz is got mh cross what is m m is got m depends upon i plus i to minus i there are so for spin half nuclei we have two orientations minus half and plus half now let us find out the orientation direction and its magnitude and i said it orients in the direction of the field in the direction opposite to the field but does not necessarily mean always perfectly aligned along the field in fact although we say in the direction of the field it is making an angle theta the orientation the direction of orientation of this component plus this magnetic moment uh, magnetic uh, this angular momentum along this uh, two quantization directions they make an angle theta what is this angle theta you can find out i know this pz because this is this i know as mh cross and i also know p is equal to h cross into root into i into i plus 1 that i mentioned earlier i is spin half i know i i know h cross i can calculate what is p i know pz because it got mh cross m is equal to minus half and plus half are the only two orientations because it depends upon i now i can calculate theta for that i must know what is this or i i don't need to know if i know this and this also i can calculate theta similarly i can calculate theta for this orientation and there is no difference between theta this and this one is this is theta positive this is negative this orients in the direction opposite the field by the same angle it orients in the direction of the field so you can find out the angle theta the direction of orientation let us do that okay for m half find out cos theta is equal to mh cross over h cross into root of i into i plus 1 go back here cosine of the angle theta is given by this side by this side is a trigonometry right angle triangle i am using okay that is the idea so i know cosine of the angle theta is given by this what is the value of m half for m half m is equal to half what is i h cross and h cross here see this h cross and this h cross gets cancel out so you are left with m m is equal to half i is equal to half so it turns out to be half over square root of 3 by 4 you this is simple numbers plug it into your calculator you get cosine of theta now find out cos inverse of that it turns out to be theta is equal to 54.7 degrees 
Please remember, theta is 54.7 degrees. Same way, for m equal to minus half, it is 54.7 degree in the direction opposite to the z axis. So, the one of the orientation of the spin angular momentum, one component of it, in the direction of the field, correspond to theta equal to 54.7, other is same angle in the direction opposite to this thing. In the, so, these are the two orientations. This one is plus 54.7, this is minus 54.7 with respect to this one. Okay, this is what it is. We can work it out and we got this. So, two angles we know, we understood the magnitude also. We calculated magnitude and magnitude is given by this and we also know what is the angle theta. Now, what is the quantization direction for spin 1 nuclei? Can you understand? Why not? The spin one, for spin 1 nuclei, m can take three values, minus 1, 0 and plus 1. So, what are the quantization directions? Three like this. We know Pz equal to mh cross, m is equal to minus 1, so minus h cross, m equal to 0, so Pz equal to 0 here, m is equal to plus 1, Pz equal to h cross. Now, calculate the angle theta here, this is 0, this is 90 degree with respect to magnetic field, this is theta. Now, simply plug in these values. Cosine of theta for m is equal to 1, again, in this case also, you take out this one. I'm sorry. Again, this H cross, this H cross gets cancelled out. You are leaving with, left with M, which is 1, I into I plus 1, which is half into half plus 1. Okay. Half into half plus 1. Half plus 1 is 3 by 4. Oh, so there is some mistake I made here. Okay. So you can find out. So this should be 3 by 4. Okay, there is a mistake. Uh, okay, yeah. Anyway, please note, this is not half. This is I into I plus 1. This has to be 3 by 4. Okay, plug in these values. I have written wrong here, but I have correctly calculated the angle by pl plugging into the calculator. So this turns out to be theta for this is 45 degrees. And for, with respect to plus z axis, this is 45. This is 45 with respect to minus z axis. So, you calculate the angle theta for plus 1, 0 and minus 1 states. Now, same way, work out the quantization direction for spin 3 by 2 nuclei. There are only 4 possible quantization directions. Minus 3 by 2, minus half, plus half and plus 3 by 2. Again, I don't want to go into the details of that. Okay. Okay, plus plug in these values and then what is m is equal to 3 by 2, it is 3 by 2 into 3 by 2 plus 1, find out this value number, put plug this into calculator, find out theta, now theta values for this are 39.23, for this is 39.23, in the direction of the field, in the direction opposite to the field. Of course, for these two we have already worked out, plus half and minus half is 54.7 both in the direction of the field, in the direction opposite the field. So that's what we have worked out. So now we can get magnitude and the direction of orientations of all these vectors, all this. Okay. So now the next question is we have to understand another term I want to introduce called nuclear magnetic moment. Well, if I start discussing about this nuclear magnetic moment, I think it will, I have to take a lot, a lot of time. I cannot stop in between. So what I'm going to do is I'll stop for the day. I have already introduced to you a lot of things today about the spin angular momentum, direction of their quantization. How do you get their angle? How do you get their magnitude, etc. And what are the directions of orientations of for spin half nuclei, 
spin 1 nuclei and spin 3 by 2 nuclei. We calculated the angle theta and magnitude and everything. Please remember these things. These are all important from the basic conceptual understanding of NMR. The spin physics is a little bit is important. And I also said for spin angular momentum I, P, we have two quantum numbers I and M. M depends upon I, is the MI, goes from minus I to plus I. So based on that, uh, the Z co component of the angular, angular momentum P, which is quantized along Z axis, is given as PZ is equal to MH cross. M values are known. Accordingly, we calculated everything. This is the summary of what I said for today in gist, in one or two sentences. We'll continue further with some more concept called magnetic moment, which is also essential. And then we continue further about more understanding of the concepts in from the next class.